Today's video will show a couple different ways to create custom holiday photo ornaments, including a fun snow globe technique. I'll be showing you how to get your photos into a 3 inch disc ornament using a template and scissors or a 3 inch circle die. And I'll even provide some examples of how you can use an ornament to showcase some of your kids' artwork. For those of you who purchased my class kit, please take a moment now to make sure that you have all the pieces listed here. And you can also find a full list of materials uh, or download a template of my ornament inserts at my blog. Let's get started. You can use any printed photo. Ideally, your subject should be three inches max. Um, if you want a full body, um, you're probably going to aim for two and three quarters inch. And you'll notice here that my printed photos are in circles, so I have a template um, that I just drop this in on my software. So I can um, easily print these and, and get them cut on a single sheet of four by six. For my class participants, you can use the clear template now to overlay on top of your printed photo. And you can use a dry erase marker, you can use a ballpoint pen. Try not to use a pen that can easily smear. Okay, so definitely a ballpoint pen is probably the most ideal. Okay, so I drew a circle around the template and now I'm just using my scissors to cut this as best I can along the circle. I know cutting a circle freehand is not the easiest thing to do. Okay, this little notch at the top is important because you don't want your photo rotating around once you put it in. So this little notch keeps it upright. Now I put the clear template on top again just to help round out some of the circle. And now I'm going to do this again for the second photo if you're doing a front and back photo ornament. Picking up the little clear template and positioning it over the subjects using the ballpoint pen to trace the outline. I remove the clear template and cut around. Okay, and now for this next part. Again, I'm going to lay the template over this photo so that I can help use it again as another guide to help make sure that my picture is as round as possible. This is important for a double-sided photo ornament because when you lay the two photos one on top of another, you could see a little bit of white if this isn't cut perfectly. So you'll see here as I put them back to back, there's just little bits of white around here. Now this is minor and not extremely visible, but definitely for my customers I like to make this as, um, as exact as possible. So I'm teaching you my little tricks here. I've got them laid over one another and I'm just trimming off any extra white that I see. And then I'm gonna flip this over and do this again on the other side. You'll see with the next technique that if you are a more avid crafter and you have a die cut and emboss machine and a three inch circle die, this can be much more simple. Okay, but now I am going to use my glue dots I'm using four in this example, one at the top, one at the bottom, and one on each side. This is not necessary for um, my class students. Um, I gave you guys two extra, and I would suggest putting them on the left and the right of your circle photo. And now I'm applying it to the clear template. Now my reason for not just putting the photos in directly is that when you curl up the photo to get it inside, um, it could remain a little curled. So the window transparency, the window sheet, helps, to, helps the photos retain their straight form. So again, the most important part is the left and the right of the photo, because that's the most common place that uh, the photo will curl. As I just mentioned, this next example, I'm going to use my mini Stampin' Up uh, die cut and emboss machine. 
It has about a three inch width platform, so it works perfectly for these, these small photo die cuts. So now I'm, instead of using my template, I'm actually using my three inch circle die to position my subjects where I want them. And now I'm using a piece of repositionable tape. This is just basic painter's tape. I want to make sure it's not super sticky so it doesn't ruin the photo. Now as I make my sandwich, I'm going to run this through my machine. I have this on top of my moving paper, so <laughs> it moves around quite a bit. But when it's on a sturdy surface, it doesn't move around nearly as much. All right, so now I have my perfect three inch circle cut. And now I'm gonna apply it to the clear transparency template. Again, I'm focusing on just the left and the right. So my class students, again, just the left and the right is all that's necessary two blue dots. They should be in your kit. And again, this little tab, top tab, you want to make sure is pointing upwards. If you want, you can write something on the back here with a sharpie, a year, a name, anything that you'd like. My last example for the photo ornaments is uh, creating this snow globe effect. So again, you want to make sure that your subject is fits within the three inch diameter circle. And now I am cutting around the tops of their heads in this scenario. You'll see an example here. Um, I also have a full body picture of, um, of some kids. And so it looks like they're actually in this, this snow globe. Okay, so we're just cutting around the tops of, of the heads or uh, around the tops of the bodies. I'm using precision scissors here, which really makes a difference when you're cutting this fine detail. And so the placement of the glue dots in this scenario is going to be towards the heads. Again, you have to imagine you're going to be curling this photo to get it into your ornament. And so you want to adhere, use these glue dots um, in places that you think are going to, to remain curled. So I apply it to my clear transparency, again, the notch points upwards, and there are my three inserts. Now here, for some of my class kits, I also provided a white piece of cardstock where the kids can just doodle, scribble, actually stamp and color, um, lots of different options here. Okay, but now I'm gonna show you my technique to get these photos or the cardstock into the ornament. So I'm gonna place my finger along the center of the photo using the notch as kind of my centerpiece. I'm going to fold this upwards. Almost looks like a taco maybe, taco shell. Okay. You do want to um, make sure to not keep this rolled for a long period of time. Okay, So I am just going to barely tuck one edge into the other, place it in fast, and then use my finger a little bit to open it back up. I'm also using a bamboo stick here as well. And you'll get to see this a couple more times. All right, so for this one again, the notch is just the transparency. I put my finger in the center. I fold up each of the sides barely, and I just tuck one edge under the other, and then I place it in as fast as I can and open it back up again. So you can see a little bit of a curl on this one. And so I just use either my finger, a bamboo stick, something that is long and skinny, and you can just help smooth it out. Right? The least amount of time that you have your picture curled, the better. Okay, finger in the middle. Fold up the sides, tuck one side, and place it in. The snow globe transparency um, photo is a little bit thinner, so it might move a little bit. So just make sure that your little notch stays up towards the top. Okay, and now for the snow globe, or um, I think if you use, if you created a doodle for your kids, you can definitely place little buttons, little flowers, little die cuts, little anything. 
But for this snow globe one, I'm actually using um, this fake snow. And here's an image of um, the snow that I used. It is so old, this bag, so I don't even know if this is still available. But just an example of what I use. You don't need a lot here. And actually with this picture specifically, um, one of the subject's faces is at the very bottom of my snow globe. So um, I'm actually removing just a little bit of the snow because I didn't want it to cover his face. Okay, and you could make sure that you put a little bit of snow in the back, um, back side of the ornament as well. Totally your call here. And now I'm just putting the tops on each of the ornaments. If you have a double-sided photo, I try to squeeze the little, the little wire pieces of this topper um, in between the two photos. This isn't necessary, but definitely um, something that I do. And for my class participants, some of you guys received a bow. Some of you guys received just a ribbon because I thought that you might want to try to make a bow on your own. You can use one of your glue dots or hot glue to adhere this to your ornament. Uh, if you want to see my little tip, this is a thicker ribbon. This isn't how I always make my bows, but for this thick ribbon, make the two bunny ears, cross them over, tuck one in, and you should get your bow. There's many different tutorials out there for bow making. This is just a quick little one for my class participants. All right, and we'll get that glue dot again. One glue dot. These are so sticky. I love these for adding embellishments to my projects. And here are the final ornaments. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. See you next time.